Hello all, welcome to Rotrainings.com. In this session, we'll discuss about execution chain in Oracle Apex. Let's get into the scenario. And what we want to achieve is we want to run a PL SQL program, which takes some time to complete, and we don't want to wait for it. So that's the agenda. Like uh, we'll see how do we implement this logic in Apex. Okay, and we use a concept called execution chain, which is a page processing type. So page processing something, some action, which is which happens whenever you perform an event, right? Whenever you perform an event, an action happens that is called, we call it as page process. In the page process, we have one more, uh, like one of the kind of process that is called execution change. And why do we use this execution chain? Is using execution chain, you can mention the list of process that can be executed in a step-by-step -step manner. Let us say, when you perform an event and you want to run the couple of, couple of, you know, like a functionalities, like a, step A, step B, step C, like that. And you want to run them one, one after the other, right? So in that scenario, you can simply use an execution chain. Now, in our particular session today, we want to focus on the execution chain in which we run the process in a background manner. So, but what is the need? As we said, the need for this one is we want to invoke a background process, which takes some time, and we don't want user to wait for it. We just run it, let the program run it in the background and finish it, that's it. So for this, we use this particular execution chain and we need to set a property called run in background on the execution chain. And here there are two particular properties. The first one here I mentioned here, Apex Apple page background process status, which is a view. In this one, you'll have the information about which background process is running and what is state of it. And there's another one called Apex background process dot get current execution ID and which is a like a, a global variable or a function which provides an execution ID of the current invocation of that particular execution chain. So whenever you invoke the execution chain, right? So what will happen is it generates an execution ID and using that you can monitor what is the status of your execution chain, okay? Now, and we'll try to design these particular pages now. So the first one is employee page. We'll show the list of employees and that we'll have on that particular one, you'll have a hyperlink. Once you click on that particular page, it invokes a pop-up or a form, form dialog, and you just need to click on a button called Invoke BG Process. Once you click on the Invoke BG Process, we can navigate to a process history report wherein it will provide the information about what is the I mean, list of employees who have submitted the execution and also the BG Process report, which shows what is the status of your particular execution. The status here you can observe here, it is NQ, executing, and success, right? So you could observe here, success means the process completed. NQ is nothing but it is waiting to be executed. Executing is nothing but like a, currently the process is getting executed. The process is running, I mean to say it is executing. And then, yeah, success, NQ, executing, okay? Now, we'll just try to run the demo and then we'll create the sample application also. So I'll just run it first. Yeah, so I'll just go here. I'll try to run the application. Yeah, so this is the first page. If you'd like to run it, execution chain demo. And we can select any employee. Let's say I'll select this employee. And I'll just click on invoke background process. So what exactly it will do is it will call a PL SQL, custom PL SQL API. It will show the logic of this one. So this is an API which it gets called on the button event, submit PG process. We are just simply calling this uh, insert statement and also we are performing a 50 second sleep using the DVM session. So we just want to make sure that when you invoke this program, we want to wait for it in real in real scenario let us say if you want to invoke a long running process which takes some time so we want to mimic that behavior so voluntarily we have written a sleep command here which takes a 50 seconds to wait i'll just click on this invoke bj process now you can observe here you can go back to the process history report you should be able to see a re record in the bj report saying saying that it is getting executing right so once this is done you should be able to say record in the employee process list report also now let's say i'll try to run it one more for other, other user and click here, invoke BG process. Now it should be, if you click on the invoke process history report, it should be, yeah, let's see here. Maybe it would have been completed by the time we enter here, right? Yeah, so you can observe here. One is enqueued, other one is executing. So this is how it performs. So now we'll just try to implement this logic now. So what I'll do is I'll just click on app builder and assumption is we have this API and also we have a table called EMP BJ process in which we have ID and execution ID, ID, which is the primary key. Execution ID is nothing but a background process ID and the EMP number. And we just want to understand for which user you have submitted the execution. 
So those are the main important columns. I'll just go on create the execution chain demo app. Click on create application. So I'll just create employee page, classic report. Let's run it. Yes. So we are able to see the data. So now what we'll do is run that. Yeah. So I'll just go here. Okay. So I'll just create a page. So we'll create a form. Okay. So this is a form in which user submits, right? EMP form, execution, chain, and yeah. So it also depends on EMP, and we don't want this to be added to the navigation menu, right? And when the once the user gets submitted, right? So to which page we would like to go back? So we'd like to go back to the employee page. And this also should be go back to the employee page. Click on create page. And one more thing we'd like to do it. So on this one, I'll just make it as model dialog. And also, if you want to rearrange, what you can do is you can just set them so that it will be shown properly in a formatted manner. Yes. Now what we do is we'll just save it as of now. We'll go back to the employee page. So in the employee page, we'll make this employee number as a link and We'll make the form as a target. Click on target here. Select this one, EMP form execution, and also map the EMP number. So P4 EMP number, and map the EMP number of this particular page. Click on OK. Yeah. Let's save it. You can run it now. Yeah, so just try. So we are able to see the, the form when the user clicks on this and uh, we don't see the button which we are expecting. So we'll just add one button on the form page which invokes the chain. That is where the important logic we want to build. So I'll just open the form page. So on the form page, what I do is I'll just click on this process, create a new process here. invoke employee execution chain process and here you make this one yes yeah you make this as execution chain right and also very important property settings click on run in background under this execution chain property and also yeah so let us finish will create a new child process and this one executes a PL SQL code, right? We'll just say invoke PL SQL. And what is the code behind it? So this is a code we would like to call it. So it's just simple one. Get the execution ID, call this background API and pass the employee number as well as execution ID. And what is the employee ID in our page here? It is P4 EMP number, right? So yeah, let's change it accordingly. This is P4, EMP number. Okay. Save it. And now 
next thing is what we need to do is we need to add a button so i'll just click on you create a button and i'll just make it in the top and uh, say invoke bg process so you can make it as hot and this button and the process of the execution chain which we created what we do is this particular execution chain would like to invoke when a user clicks on the button which we created just now invoke bg process okay so yeah and now one what we can do is we can just go back to the employee page and instead of building the report what we can do is we can also try to see the information from here let us I'll just create duplicate this one open the SQL development SQL scripts command and here you can just see this one so as of now we have a couple of records here I'll just delete them okay and you can also observe this one so these are the two important tables. Yeah, so. Now what we do is we'll run the page. Let's say first we'll run the page, employee page. And select any employee. Click on invoke BG process. Right, so now we can observe here. Let us see whether you do have a data here. So okay, you can observe here for this execution ID, 9745. And this same one, you should be able to observe here in one. Yeah. So you can better filter that where application underscore name is equal to this name. And you can observe this one. The status of this one in work BG process, it is in the exhibiting state, right? So this how, you know, like uh, what is happening is we just invoked it and it is got invoked and it is running it. And you can try for another M file, let us say 7521 in work BG process. Now, if we just go back to the this one, we should be able to see one more record. Right? Yeah. So now we got two records. One is in exhibiting status, success, and if Maybe if at all, if you run it one more, what will happen is that may get into NQ status, right? So this is how we can impl implement, you know, like a execution chain and, you know, like uh, we can make them run in the background. And you can also observe one more thing here. Let us say, and now here, the employee form execution chain. As of now, we just added only one process, right? Maybe if we just click on the process, under the execution chain, I just added one process, like invoke PL SQL. You can write a number of process under this particular execution chain and make them run in a serial fashion one by one and also you have a serializable logic you can also enable this so that it'll run in a serializable manner and you have other properties which you can use it to have a different logic so in our case we just try to design a simple logic invoking pl sql and rather than waiting for it so what is happening is if you don't make them run in background let us say let's show you one more thing let us say i'll just remove this invoke in run in background now what i'll do is i'll just run the page again employee page yeah just select employee click on invoke bg so now what is happening is the page is not getting closed the dialog is not getting closed in earlier when we click when you mentioned run in background this particular dialog was not waiting like this it's simply when you click on the button it just invoked the background process as it was running the background and simply the form form got closed now here what will happen is until 50 seconds is completed this particular background process will not get closed so that's the difference between a running in a background and running in a foreground okay so this is what we'd like to discuss this is what we discussed so far in this particular session thank you